we have a monster uh, slate of NHL action tonight. Andrew McInnes is traveling, so he's not on the show, but we have stepping in to fill Andrew's big shoes. We got the Prez on today's show. We are going to cover the Islanders, Sabres, Florida, Carolina, and uh, we're going to finish it off with Vegas and Calgary. And I normally want to jump right into the Islanders and Sabres, but Prez, you're on the show. You're filling in on a day in which I know you have a busy slate uh, on your plate. Um, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing awesome, Carm. Have you been watching Wager Talk today? Um, long story short, I, I was doing so bad last week. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was horrific uh, sports betting. Saturday, I wake up. I unearth a pair of track pants I haven't worn in years. I put them on. Not the most comfortable ones. I went eight and one. Since then, I'm on a 19 and four run. And I'm still wearing these damn track pants. I'm wearing them today. So I'm on like day six or five, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Day six of these stinky, smelly track pants. But I'm doing it for the clients. I also committed on Wager Talk today that I will not have sex until I have a losing day. We went three and one last night, uh, so it continues. Uh, my stinky track pants are still on, and I have not gotten laid in six days now. I'm doing great. What's up, brother? Thanks for having me. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure Vivian is uh, thrilled on both accounts, uh, Prez. But listen, speaking of stinks, um, about a month ago, it looked like the both the Sabers and the Islanders, to use the word stink um they were stinking it up a coaching change for the islanders it took a while for that yeah. uh, bounce uh that uh, new coaches bounce to come in but patrick wall hasn't playing well six game win streak gets snapped in la they're going to finish that road trip off in uh, buffalo and, and this one's minus 110 both ways sabers themselves prez six three and one their last 10 games and uh a tough schedule during those games and three impressive wins over the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, Carolina, and uh, and Tampa Bay mixed in there as well, too. This team is playing extremely well right now. Give me your thoughts on this one. You know, Carm, listen, an important game. Uh, all of a sudden, Buffalo has a path to the playoffs. I mean, it's unlikely. Um, and we see this with Buffalo a lot. You're in, you're out. Start badly, mediocre, middle, great ending. Everyone gets excited for next year. and then. The cycle continues. Patrick was an incredible coach, and I, I, I'm shocked it took so long for him to find his way back into the NHL. But when I look at this game, and it is a very important game to both teams, I like over the total, man. Uh, I think I see a six on board. Uh, that just makes no sense to me. Now, I understand that the argument is, well, these teams head-to-head -head play under. Yeah, they have. They've played under five times in a row. You know what else? The New York Islanders played under for five years in a row. Now they're a stone cold over team. This is a different New York Islanders hockey team to what we've seen in the past. They are 34, 25 and five to the over. And uh, although Buffalo has played to the under all year, this is a team that has scored seven goals twice in their last six games. Seven goals, twice. Uh, it's not like they're not scoring, Carm. Uh, I think six is a low number for this game. It's a low number. Look, you know, one of the things that I really like to do when I handicap is I like to look at the, the line in relation to what it normally is. If you go back through Buffalo, their last four games have been six and a half. Detroit, Edmonton, Nashville, and Toronto. None of those four teams are playing to the over any more than the New York Islanders are. Frankly, Nashville and Edmonton are playing to the under. So they were able to post the six and a half against those four teams, but they couldn't post the six and a half against the Islanders. Why is that? And the Islanders are constantly priced in at six. Uh, I think we're seeing remnants of 
You know, how many years in a row, five, ten years, New York Islanders have played incredible defense, have had basically no offense and have played to the under year after year after year? Uh, that's It's like people haven't figured out that this is a different hockey team than it was in the past. Six is a low number, Carm. Uh, I think one of these teams is going to get to five tonight themselves. I like over the total in this game. I have nothing on the side, brother. All right. Um, and I'm going to come back to you on this in a second with some stats, and we're going to, we're going to discuss it. But when, when speaking of over and unders, I literally I had to go back. Uh, I'm not going to use the word literally. I had to go back and watch yesterday's puck time because even talking to Andrew afterwards, he's like, uh, he said to me, you may have gotten a little mixed up with the Colorado game because I was certain I had said uh, during the show, uh, Andrew, during the last month of the season, I don't like playing overs, uh, and I do like, but I do like the over in this game. But in listening to the video, I did say I don't like I don't like playing unders, uh, and I like the under this game. But I corrected myself on that video afterwards after Buster did his analysis that I did like the Colorado. How was Buster's over, internet? I did go over, but uh, yeah, let's not talk about Buster's internet. <laughs> but with with. Uh, Listen, with that said, it might have something to do with uh, this season on puck time. I've switched from espressos in the morning to tea, which is what you always see in these little containers that I have on the screen here, just to uh, keep me going. But uh, I get the why the total is six and not six and a half year press. The Sabres um, resurgence, if you want to call it, and they're only on a two game win streak, which is hilarious, but it's six, three, and one. They played well since um the end of december and it has to do with their goalie it is lukanen lukanen is allowed in 24 starts since uh, and including december 27th he has allowed three or fewer goals in 23 of 24 starts the only one is where uh he allowed four to anaheim and in 17 of those 24 starts he's allowed two or fewer goals in those games he is one of the reasons why when you get goaltending, a goalie can keep you in a game. Sorokin, he's confirmed for tonight. His numbers are good, Prez, but on the road, his numbers drop off. Uh, he's 9-9-3 nine, nine on the road, a 3.21 goals against average and 9.05 save percentage. Now, you might think 3.21 is not bad. It normally isn't, but for a goalie like Sorokin, um, who is much better at home, that is a drop off in the numbers. I think he's uh, 281 overall or 281 at home. Big drop off there. Because the toll's at six, I can see it because uh, you have to figure um, there's many ways for them to get the six. Six and a half always worries me. But uh, at six, I, I tend to agree with you on the over on this one. Any any additional thoughts on the goaltending? Yeah. So I wanted to speak, I wanted to, speak uh, to your statement about not betting overs in the last sort of month of the season. It's so funny. Um, I literally was thinking that exact thought like 20 minutes before the show started. You know, we're going to see uh, teams play a lot tighter. You know, you've got the Rangers playing Carolina tonight. Uh, a great matchup. You're going to have you know, Boston play Florida. And uh, I think Florida, you know, Florida's playing Carolina. The Rangers are also in a good matchup. They're playing Tampa Bay. We're getting now to where these teams are going to start locking in their defensive system, start to get ready for the playoffs. And I think we see this year in, year out. Would be fascinating to ask Ralph to do a chart on this, but games that are normally going over, are going to start going under over the next month. So I would be very careful playing overs and especially over six and a half. That's a number I'm going to tend to stay away from uh, for the next little while. Um, so I agree 100% with that thought, Carm. Now, I just want to jump in and say one thing to uh, one of your really awesome listeners in here. You know me, I like to discuss these what these people uh, are saying. Uh, where is it? One of the guys, and I can't find it, wrote, oh, 
GB, no, yeah, GB, Kraken and Penguins money line today. Another gentleman wrote, Penguins puck line is the best bet ever. Something like that. Um, I prefer to take San Jose, whoever you are. Uh, Pittsburgh has quit. They are done. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to find a win here or there. And that doesn't mean they're not going to win 5-1 tonight. But the best bet on the board, the best bet ever, a team that's lost four in a row and seven out of their last eight games, be careful playing teams like Pittsburgh and Calgary moving forward. Uh, These teams have mailed it in. It's over. It's done. You're better off playing against them from now till the end of the season. Sorry, Carm. No, nothing. Listen, uh, there's nothing to be uh, sorry about. And uh, I tend to agree on you. On- because the only reason for wanting to take Pittsburgh is because they're playing- you're seeing yourself while well, they're playing San Jose. Right. But, but uh, the Sharks have put um, scares into teams on the road. They went into Dallas. Dallas needed OT to beat them and then needed OT to beat them again. Uh, in the in the rematch a few days later, they went into Calgary and beat Calgary six to three. They went into LA and beat LA four to three. Um, I get your point. This is a, a Pittsburgh team that loses in overtime to Ottawa. That's their fourth straight loss, and they've lost by a combined score of seventeen to two. Right. Yeah, and, and 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 there's a per- so so I want to so listen I, I'm not here to hijack your show and I'm appreciative that you have me on but we all did a bunch of uh, betting strategy videos last week they were a lot of fun to do uh, I we did three topics each one of my topics were don't be a hero and I think that that's a very common occurrence uh, when uh, in the betting world especially when people bet like as a group of friends you know so you. You know, you're in the hockey dressing room or the baseball dressing room. You're at a bar. Who are you betting tonight? Who are you betting tonight? Oh, I'm betting, uh, you know, I'm betting the Detroit Pistons to beat the Lakers in L.A. on the money line plus 420. Don't be a hero. Pittsburgh is a disaster. They cannot even score a goal. Is this the day? Anytime you're asking yourself, is this the day? Is this the day Pittsburgh finally gets their act together? Why? Don't be a hero. Give, take what the books give you. The books have given you a huge dog in San Jose. Don't try to think, oh, this is the day of all days that Pittsburgh's finally going to get their act together. They might win. I'm not betting this game. But guys, don't overthink this shit. Pittsburgh is done. And the other thing is, and we were talking about not betting overs for the next month, Carm. This is the time of year where dogs are super live. We saw Chicago win. Chicago, Anaheim, San Jose. They're going to have a better record over their next 20 games percentage-wise than they did all season long. So be careful playing big chalk favorites. Be careful always playing the puck line because, man, so many games go to overtime. Uh, And that's it. Public service announcement over. We need to get to the second game, but a couple things. All you got to do is look at uh, some of the games that were played last year during the final few weeks of the season. Uh, And since we're talking about Pittsburgh, let's 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 actually highlight Pittsburgh. Last game of the regular season, they need to beat the Chicago Blackhawks to make it in the playoffs. They were like minus 500 or something. I remember that. that. And they lose the game. They lose the game. Uh, They actually lost a couple of times during the last two weeks of the season as minus 400 favorites. Uh, yep. It is absolutely ridiculous. On a on a night in which there's 12 to 13 games tonight, uh, you can find other plays that probably offer you more value than to hope that a team that's been outscored 
by a 17 to two margin is going to miraculously win because they're playing one of the worst teams in the league. It doesn't always work out that way. Good luck if you're taking them. I hope you win. It's not on my card. Yeah. Guys, it, uh, it's, it's Thursday. So it is a customer appreciation day at Wager Talk. $5 um, across the site on um, for any any capper taking um, uh, or who's participating in this. Prez, you have a 5%. You have not a 5% play. You have a $5 NHL play up for tonight. I have one up for tonight. Um, talk to me about that play if you want or that package and sure. Florida and Carolina. Yeah, so five, $5 customer appreciation day. And guys, let us know if you like the new website as well. Obviously, it went up yesterday. There's still kinks to sort out. Uh, I think it looks great. It's super slick. Um, my play tonight, Carm, for my $5 uh, customers is a 4% NHL money line uh, bet. This is only my eighth 4% NHL money line bet of the year. I'm five and two in those. My actual money line bets are 30 and 16 on the entire season. This is a great play. Uh, one of the strongest plays I've had, probably the strongest play I've had in 10 days. So uh, I put it down as the customer appreciation play. Uh, it's up over at my website on Wager Talk. Check it out. Uh, let's all win together. As for Carolina and Florida, man, this is a huge game. Uh, not from a playoff perspective, from a mindset perspective. And that's why I like Carolina in this game. Florida is an amazing team, best team in hockey. If Florida was playing Carolina, best of seven in the playoffs, I would take Florida. I think Florida is a better hockey team than Carolina. Carolina just lost one nothing to the New York Rangers. There are, from Carolina's perspective, uh, they are fighting for first place in their division with the New York Rangers. From They are have to look at the New York Rangers and the Florida Panthers as the two toughest teams to beat on their way to the Stanley Cup. And trust me, Carolina has Stanley Cup um, plans. That doesn't mean it'll work out, but they plan on winning the Cup. From a confidence and emotional perspective, I don't think Carolina wants to lose to the Rangers and Florida back to back. I think it would it would be a uh, negative statement in that dressing room. So I look at this game and I think to myself, I don't think Florida gives a shit. I mean, obviously they care and obviously they want to beat Carolina, but they don't want to beat Carolina m worse than Carolina wants to beat them. Florida just went on the road beat Dallas, Florida just beat the Rangers, New Jersey, Detroit, Philly, Calgary. They lost to Philly. This Florida team is lights freaking out. But I just feel like Carolina is gonna give it more tonight. I think Carolina doesn't want to lose to the two top teams in their division back to back as the playoffs are around the corner. I lean on the under in this game as well, Carm. It's five and a half. I look at this game and I think this game could be very similar to the Rangers game. I think I think this game will end 3-1, 2-1 with an empty netter. So I like Carolina and I like under the total. I don't want to take a side in this game, Prez, uh, as well, just because you look at the last game they played and uh, and I talked about it. I said, give me seven games in the Eastern Conference Final between Florida and Carolina, like the game that we saw. Because if you're a hockey purist, you go back to the days in which there were low-scoring defensive games, and they played. It was it was a great game, one nothing scoreline. But sometimes numbers can be <laughs> deceiving. Uh, the shots on goal in that game, I believe, were uh, let me. I'm just bringing them up. Whereas 45 to 29. Uh, in that game for um, for the Panthers, the XG numbers in that game uh, were equally as high, um, 4.31 to 2. Point, uh, uh, sorry to 2.17, again uh, in Florida's favor in that game, which is um, hard to believe for a team generates that much 
uh, XG and doesn't score a goal. And that game was decided in the last 20 seconds of the game. Uh, I believe Ajo scored the game winner with a, with you know under 30 seconds left in that game uh, in a five-on-five -five situation. So uh, I want to see another good one tonight, but I'm going to lean the under. This game originally opened at six, yeah. got pushed. The market pushed it to five and a half, and rightfully so. That's where it should be. And it's much like you said, one of those games that um, it, it seems like it could be like a 3-1 type of game with an empty net, or it could be a, a game that goes to OT tied at two, and the under is there. Um, under five and a half for me in this one. And I've got my overs and unders correct on this game. Brez, under five and a half is the play um, I want here. Guys, um, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, like button as well too. Uh, a bunch of you guys, watching this show hit that like button only takes you a second to do so drop a comment in the comment section below let us know what you think about today's show and who your best bets are we still got plenty to do we're going to talk about vegas and calgary next and then the latter challenge yes the edmonton oilers minus one and a half easily beat the washington capitals the latter challenge is alive and kicking andrew and i collaborated on the latter play early this morning uh, before he set off on his travels and we will have that ladder play coming up at uh, near the end of the show but before that prez vegas and calgary i know you are um a closet vegas golden knights fan right now you are a Leafs fan but you got to be a vegas golden knights fan stanley cup champions playing extremely well loaded up at the trade deadline give me your thoughts on this one Carm, I think this is uh th this is one of my favorite bets on the board. I I like Ve Vegas here uh tonight. The the number is a little heavy. Uh minus 150 last I looked. Um but you know, I I played Vegas a couple of nights ago uh against Seattle on the money line and they won a miracle game. Uh they were down 4-2 with 7 minutes to go in the game. Um, they scored to make it 4-3. They tied it up with 16 seconds on the clock. And then they won an incredibly exciting, dramatic overtime. Um, Vegas is a bet on team moving forward, period. I'm looking to bet Vegas as often as possible. Now, I'm the same guy that was on the show two weeks ago saying something is wrong with Vegas. They're not right. Um... But they were seriously injured. Uh, Eichel out, Martinez out, Stone out. Um, they were playing, you know, minor leaguers up and down the lineup. Uh, this team now is almost fully healthy. They are loaded with talent after the trade deadline. <clears throat> and sorry, and they're a team that I think, look, they're fighting for their lives. You know, they they, they are holding on to a playoff spot, um, there are teams behind them. Uh, Vegas can't afford to lose games. So I look at Vegas and I'm like, this is a bet on team moving forward. This is a team that's going to find their rhythm. They're going to find their mojo. I think their games on a whole are going to be lower scoring games than they have been all year. So I'm always looking to bet the under in, in uh, Vegas game, six and a half tonight. I like the under. I prefer Vegas. The only thing that really kept me off of Vegas is Calgary's lost three games in a row. Now I'm a be I'm betting against Calgary. I mentioned it yesterday on Wager Talk Today. Uh, Calgary and Pittsburgh are two teams I'm looking to fade. You know, Vegas is a team I'm looking to bet on. I have no issue if you guys want to bet Vegas at minus one fifty. I just prefer that they were playing a team that wasn't as wounded a dog as Calgary is. Because I do believe Calgary is going to get, you know, their mojo back for a two, three game period before they completely shit the bed. Um, I, it's not the best spot for Vegas, but I'm that's the only way I could play this game. And I would also look to take under the total. All right, I like it. I want to answer a question for uh, a couple of guys who are asking about like looking up XGs. So when I'm quoting some of the XG numbers, I'll go to natural uh, stat trick. Uh, on the top left-hand corner of the site, you'll see games. Uh, if you if you if you um, 
but your cursor over games, you can see the East. So you'll see the teams in the East. You can select, in this case, say Carolina. Say, click, uh, select Carolina. It'll show you um, a bunch of stats, but it'll show you five versus five. I'll select on all strengths, and then uh, it'll say Carolina versus a certain team. So I will scroll down to Florida, hit submit, and you'll get two games. It'll show you both games. You can click on limited report, and it'll show you high danger chances, shots on goal. Uh, XG numbers and specifically XG numbers for every single period of that uh, of that game, just to give you a better idea. Um, don't live or die on just an XG number. Uh, it's the eye test as well too. Prez watches a ton of hockey, as do I, as do Andrew, as does Dave Koken and Brian. You have to factor in both. Um, it's not just analytics. It's also what you're seeing on the ice, and uh, especially late in the season when you feel teams have given up. It's going to give you an opportunity to find some uh, find some dogs there. Prez, as far as this game goes, the Vegas and Calgary game, uh, you know, I faded Calgary uh, in their last couple of games in Carolina. I thought that was a terrible way to end their trip, and rightfully so, they end up losing that game seven two. And then ahead, they come home and they and they face uh, Colorado. And again, I bet Colorado regulation. I like Vegas in this spot as well, too. The, the Knights are involved uh, in a playoff race as well, too, uh, with a couple teams uh, outside yep. of that eighth spot, uh, obviously breathing down their next six to eight points. A couple of wins by the Knights puts them in a comfortable position. This is a team that's getting better and is going to be a bet on team as you get towards the playoffs because of the whole, uh, and Andrew and Brian talked about this, the long-term injury reserve and some players coming off of that. Um, I don't know if we're going to see Mark Stone, but um, this is a team that's going to if, use the salary cap uh, and use it well within the rules uh, to make a run at a second consecutive Stanley Cup. So they are going to be there. I'm not a big fan of Calgary. I think that their strength of schedule, they beat up on some teams that they probably should have beat up on. But when they play the better teams in the league, uh, they just haven't performed well, and this is another spot. Can they win tonight? Possibly. But again, I am not going to put money on this might be the night that they play better. Right. Um, kind of like what Prez mentioned earlier. So Aiden Hill uh, and Markstrom are the uh, expected goalies. We'll see where they go with this one. But the market's been on Vegas, Prez, as far as the over the opening uh, numbers and the overnights minus 140 minus 150 yeah. anything additional to add on this game yeah not really i will just you know re like totally off topic if mark stone comes back for the playoffs that rule needs to change it is total bs that's say again you miss me on that one sorry uh, if mark stone comes back for the playoffs just like how kucherov did it for tampa bay and they went and won the stanley cup that rule is bullshit. sure it might be inside of the rules but that doesn't mean the rules are right and the rules would need to be changed it is the biggest load of shit in the world that you can oh yeah i'm gonna uh you know sydney crosby next year you're gonna sit the whole year on a uh, long-term injury and then you'll come back in the playoffs yeah, Connor, take the year off. We'll load the team up, and then we'll give you we'll give you a twenty million dollar a year contract for the next eight years. But you'll never play in the regular season. We'll only bring you in in the playoffs, so we can stay under the cap and load our team up. It's the biggest load of bullshit in the world. Anyway, it's irrelevant to sports. No. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. Uh, but listen, I get it. There's there's rules across all sports. I, I'm not a fan of. I'll mention a couple of them. Uh, one is the NHL. One is the Canadian Football League. The NHL. Uh, I believe I would love a system in the NHL in which you're awarded two points for winning a game, whether it's a regulation or an overtime, but remove the point that the team that makes it to overtime and loses gets. You're rewarded for failure. The CFL, you miss a field goal um, and the ball goes through the end zone, you get a point. You're rewarded again for failure. Those are um, those are just rules um, well, that we're, we're, Carm, I just I mean, don't look, understand. We could, Carm, we could list a million rules. There's no rule stupider in the world than 
you know, calling a timeout with one second to go in basketball and having the ref carry the ball all the way to the opponent's end. I always thought to myself, man, could you imagine the Super Bowl? Three seconds left, no time on the clock. Your, the team is down by three at their 20-yard line. But no worries, timeout. Ref picks the ball up, moves it all the way in a field goal position. Game over. Uh, John March Marchese or, or said he, he he's like, uh, stop crying. Rule that rule is for everyone. So all because a rule is for everyone means that the rule is a good rule. All rules are for everyone, John. That's why it's called a rule. It doesn't mean it's not a bullshit rule that needs to be changed. Let's go, Carm. Without rules, there is chaos. Let me tell you that. Um, Prez, uh, do you remember Maxwell Smart? Uh, wasn't the uh, course. the evil empire Don called Adams. chaos? Yeah, yes, yeah, I think so. Don Adams. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, speaking of uh, which, guys, it's the ladder challenge. Uh, Andrew and I collaborated on this one. I get, as I said this morning. The Oilers get there for us last night. We are on to play number four. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning. We have not made it past. This is the third ladder challenge for us. We have not made it past play number four, but it was because the Ottawa Senators mushed both of them. We are going to the Buffalo Sabres tonight in this one for the, uh, and it's a risky one, but one we like. Minus 110 on the Sabres, 606 to win. 551. That'll take us uh, close to like 12, uh, 1157, I believe, will be the number, which will make play number five very interesting. Sabres uh, back into the mix, five points back of the New York Islanders for that wild card spot. So this is a big, big four point game for them. We talked about Lukanen, the end of the road trip for the Islanders. Um, this is one in which you know, the Sabres have at home have beaten the Vegas Golden Knights during this 10 game stretch, the Edmonton Oilers, the Carolina Hurricanes, the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're playing extremely well. Mixed into those last 10 games were other tough opponents, the Winnipeg Jets, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Florida Panthers. Uh, they haven't had an easy schedule late and still 6 3 and 1 to put themselves into playoff consideration. Uh, a win over the New York Islanders puts them a little closer. Uh, whether they get there or not, as the press mentioned before, remains to be seen. But the Buffalo Sabres minus one ten tonight is the latter play. So uh, let's get some good karma, Prez. Uh, what do you think? That's a gutsy ladder play, my brother. Uh, don't hate it. Cheering for you. What do you mean, Homer? Oh, it's all because he. Yeah, it, you know, interesting, Dan. You call it a homer play, but Buffalo ain't Carm's home. So it might be a phenomer play, you know, a fan homer play, but, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, Buffalo's not will, Carm's I home. I will say so. this. I, I will say this. I will say this in uh, my defense, if you guys calling it a homer play, is um, if you've been following puck time for the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about the New York Islanders and how. Uh, that coaching bounce has finally worked. And, you know, I did say that three-game road trip for them where they went out west, they had to win the first two games um, because they played the Kings in the third one. Uh, anything short of four points on that road trip would be a disaster. It's exactly the way it went. Uh, they're coming home. The, the schedule gets a little tougher. They close it out here in Buffalo. They have, I think, an easy one in the next game, which should be easy. I think it's the centers. I'm not sure. And then they have a strong stretch of Metro opponents, which will test um, just how good um, or how far along this Islanders team has come on, come um, under Patrick Wah. So we will see how that goes. Prez, let's get into the best bet uh, part of this show. Give us a show best bet and let us know what you have up at Wager Talk. Yeah, brother. Thanks for asking. So as I said at the beginning of the show, I'm on a 19 and four all sports run. I swept my college basketball last night. I'm on a two, a nine and two 
college basketball run and Carm, I'm up over 50 units of profit call in college basketball this season. And this is no aberration. I was up double digit units in college hoops last season as well. I really, I, I have a promo to give. I also am on a eight and two NBA run. So, I mean, six and one NHL run, nine and two college basketball run, eight and two NBA run, 19 and four all sports run, still wearing the same pants. Haven't gotten laid in six days. Use the promo code PREZ25 and you guys can get 25% off any package you want of mine. I suggest you buy a month of all my plays and let's all win together, guys. It, it's way more fun winning together. Um, my customer appreciation play tonight is a 4% NHL money line bet. Um, as I said, I'm 30 and 16 on those bet on uh, money line NHL bets all year. My show best bet. And I, I hate that it's the same as what we spoke about already, but my second favorite play board is the over in the New York Islanders Buffalo game. So that's going to be my show best bet. Thanks for having me, my brother. Great show coming up. On Wager Talk today, Marco D'Angelo, Rob Vino, and Kyle Anthony. Stay with us. It starts at noon Eastern time. Right. Best of luck with you on that play, guys. Uh, as you heard from the press, he's got the runs. So um, maybe a coupon code but a runs bing? 50 to get $50 off his... Uh, 30 day all access. I think that would be great, Prez. Get the office to set that up for you. Myself, a, that player prop on uh, Adrian Kempe yesterday was pretty much a slam dunk play. I think he ended up with uh, eight shots on goal in that game. I'm going to go with another player prop for you. And this is an interesting one. Um, another one that I missed along the way, but Cole Caulfield uh, of Montreal, uh, they play the Bruins tonight. Uh, his shot prop total is at three and a half uh, minus 140. Caulfield has gone over this number in 12 of the last 13 games and 18 of his last 21 games. He's gone over three and a half shots on goal. The Bruins last 15 games have allowed, uh, I believe it's 34 shots on goal per game average. They're top nine as far as most goals allowed. Their, their, their defense um, is allowing a lot of shots on goal. Let's see if uh, Cole Caulfield can get there for us. Over three and a half shots on goal, minus 140 as your show free play. Guys, tomorrow's going to be an extremely short show. Um, only a couple games, but we're going to do the 6 and 60, and we're going to do the ladder challenge. It may just be me and our producer, Dan Alexander. You guys want to see Dan Alexander. He does a fantastic job of hosting shows across the wager talk platform. So we'll get him on tomorrow's show. Um, I'll probably have to pay him, but uh, he will be here. So uh, for myself and the rest of the wager talk family, uh, thanks for tuning in guys. This is puck time. We will see you tomorrow.